The question for the day is, why are some of these big name soccer teams coming out of the World Cup? Why are these big names that have historically been powerhouses of soccer now getting kicked out? Today, Brazil got kicked out and got beaten by Belgium. A couple of days ago, it was uh, Spain. Germany was the first round out. Argentina is out. And uh, it's been a great World Cup. It's an interesting, uh, you know, interesting set of games. I really like this World Cup because none of the major names are now coming up. Everybody who's now in the, in the games is pretty much except France hasn't really won the World Cup. And I like that. I like the underdog to have a chance as well. So that's great. But the question is, why is that? Is the Brazilian team not physically prepared? Haven't they had enough training? What about the Germans? I mean, the German, Germany is the number one team in the world in the FIFA ranking. How come they flew out of the games on the first round, got beaten by South Korea? I mean, South Korea played a real great game, all heart, but Germany historically is a team that keeps its composure, keeps its psychology, doesn't lose its temper and plays the same pace and game until the end. Why did Germany do so poorly? Why did Brazil do so poorly? Argentina, uh, I don't know, Spain, and a lot of these big names. So I have a parallel to draw with this and the parallel is the financial market, the stock market, the uh, you know Bitcoin market, why is it that Bitcoin one day is at 10,000 and the next day is at 5,000? Why does the stock market go up and down by so many points one day? Facebook, a couple of months ago, report came out about their information that was leaked from, or you know, the company, what was the name? Um, anyway, this company that took the information from Facebook used it for the election. So Facebook stock came down to 160 and now I think it's back up to 200. I don't know if uh, you guys remember there was a time I think 2008 and also 2001 the stock market crashed and you know company like Cisco Systems or Apple Computers went down to like I don't remember Apple Computers was at, was at 80 bucks at some point and it went back up to whatever it is uh, you know or Amazon was at 80 bucks as well so when the value of a stock goes for overnight from, I don't know, 500 to 200. Does that mean the company actually, its asset have gone down so much in a day? It's not, it's the perception, it's the human psychology, it's the human perception of what may or may not happen that will give you, uh, you know, ideas of how to act. A lot of psychology also goes into competitive sports, into soccer, into anything we do in life. So. My point is, understanding owns psychology and mastering owns emotion is maybe one of the most important keys to success in life. Success in financial life, success in relationships, success in physical shape, success in everything. I've been doing martial arts for about 30 years. And anybody who's done competitive sports knows this point that it there comes a point where you're you're you know competing fighting doing something whatever if you're a soccer player you're playing on a field volleyball whatever game you do there comes a time where you're in the circle or in the game or in a field and you can't breathe anymore you can't see anymore you see black you have no breath you have nothing left there is nothing in you but there's something that carries you forward there is some power, some that, and that's all mental at that point. There is nothing physical. Something carries you forward, and that something is that these teams have that win. They have this drive. They have this strong intention that they want to do something. It's not about physical capacity. We all know Brazilians are skilled. Germans are skilled. But the teams that win is because they're more driven. They're more aware of their psychology on that day. They're more in charge and in control of their own mind and their own uh, emotions in that day. Next day might be different. Everything changes all the time. But on that day, they were in control. So my point is, if, we're, if me and you and all of us are able to be 
in control and aware of our own mind and psychology and thoughts and emotions and feelings, you're going to have a good game most of the time. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be tough days no matter what. President Obama, President no, no, uh, Trump, Clinton, whoever you want, you think is a person who has high responsibility will have bad days. But what they, what they do is they're able to understand and be aware of their own emotions and thoughts. And they don't let the emotions and thoughts rule them. They overcome them. It's like you're on a wild horse. Are you going to allow the wild horse to take you wherever you go? Or are you going to tame the horse and you are the one that will take the charge and take the horse to wherever you want to go? Are you going to let your emotions take charge of you and take you wherever you want to go? Or are you going to uh, dictate to your mind where you want to go? What am I saying? Psychology, awareness of your own mind and on your own thoughts is really the key to a lot of variety of success in life. However you want to consider success. You know, you might want to be... You might, you know, you might say meditation for me is success. If I can sit for three hours a day and meditate, that's a success for me. Well, that requires a lot of control over your mind because your mind starts playing tricks on you when you meditate. I was at Vipassana for 10 days of silence meditation not too long ago, and I just went back actually last weekend for three days to serve at uh, North Fork, California Center. And, you know, it's hard because you get up at 5 a.m. and you're up till, I don't know, 9, 9.30 as a server. You work all day as a meditator. You sit there all day and just meditate. And Vipassana system is awareness of your own body and mind. And so it's hard. So success for a Vipassana meditator is to be able to complete the 10 days without breaking your silence and without running away. So success, whatever it is for you, if it's your relationship, if it's your kids, having a good relationship with your kids, success for your kids, mastery of mind, mastery of emotions and thoughts, overcoming your own mind, being aware of it, seeing it from a third eye kind of a view, like an objective camera, is really the key. So soccer teams and these games, these World Cup games, are almost like a metaphor for life. These teams, these big teams lose not because they're not competent, not because they don't have training. It's because on that day, they were not in charge of their own emotions. They lost it somehow. UFC fighters, you see these guys going into cage, they're both in good shape. They both trained a lot. The one who wins is the one that in the last second when everything is black, still is determined, still goes, still is aware of himself and knows this pain is temporary. It's going to go. This is not going to be there permanently. It's temporary. Pain, suffering, misery is temporary. It's going to go. It's going to change. Like good times change, bad times change. They know that. They're aware of it. So they don't let this get the best of themselves. I think this is a big point of how we can overcome our ourselves and our challenges. To be aware of our own psychology. So that's it for today. I just thought this... Uh, game today with Brazil was an interesting metaphor for a lot of things that are happening in life and uh, just wanted to share this with everybody uh, comment below if you have anything to share would love to hear your opinion as well and uh, my team is always or not always but this year has been Belgium I called Belgium from the beginning and I think it's gonna make it this year let's see how it goes I'm happy for them they really worked hard they hustled so goodbye from San Francisco until uh, soon have a great evening